Hi, welcome to the session on CMA Part 1, Financial Planning, Performance and Analytics. We are discussing about the measurement, valuation and disclosure. Short term items. Accounts is able. We discussed in the previous sessions. Inventory. What is inventory? How do we measure? How do you value and disclose in the financial statements? Okay. And in this case, how you control the inventory? What type of controls you set up? The inventory cost flow methods in case of retail and manufacturing industries, like cost flow methods like first in, first out, last in, first out, average methods, using periodic inventory system and perpetual inventory system, inventory valuation methods, when we have closing stock at the end of the year, to present them on the balance sheet under current assets. Let's discuss in detail. Inventory. Inventory is nothing but a stock item or stock item which is purchased and held for sale in case of retail industries. So we buy to sell any item which we buy to sell, we classify them as inventory. Any inventory which we buy to consume in the production process so that we get finished goods so we can sell them off. Such an inventory can be in the form of raw material, a plywood in case of manufacturing of or furniture companies, work in progress, semi-finished goods, the process of raw material in some stage to become finished goods and finished goods which are ready for sale. Raw material, work in progress, finished goods. Whether it is retail industry or you know, manufacturing industry, we need to have a proper safeguarding system to control this inventory. Okay. We uh, segregate the duties of the people who handle this inventory so that only the authorized employees can have access to the inventory, especially the costly items. And locking the high priced items so that uh, everyone will not have access to these cabinets may have some kind of security cameras security tags which you can observe in some shopping complex and all mirrors to mirrors and guards to monitor any kind of misappropriation or stealing the objectives of inventory control why should we have inventory control we should safeguard the inventory and also it is a compliance that the, the financial statements should include the proper valuation of the inventory. So properly reporting the inventory in the financial statements is an external uh, requirement and the safeguarding of inventory not to get lose this inventory because of theft is an internal requirement. We use some documents in our, you know, to get this inventory in our stores. Like we make a requisition when there is a requirement. Like in a retail industry, the stores levels are monitored from time to time. The moment inventory falls at a, you know, minimum stock level, a reorder level, there will be a requisition placed. Then we, you know, place a purchase order. PO, so that the vendor will send the goods along with a delivery note. Okay, and the receiving clerk in the uh, warehouse will prepare a goods receipt note 
that what amount of goods we received then the vendor will send the invoice to your accounts payable department which is to be prepared which is to be injected into the system so different documents are to be prepared with a proper segregation of duties to control this inventory so that you know that there is an inventory which exists and when we sell it off that inventory is going to be updated from time to time okay. and at the end of the year you see that what inventory is left that you can compare with the system called stock taking inventory verification physical check of the inventory whether the inventory in the system matches with the physical inventory in your stores and warehouse etc okay and you find any deviations variations that you need to account what is the cost of the, the inventory see inventory we purchased for say ten thousand dollars from a supplier but to move the goods all the way from the supplier place to our warehouse we spend money right so we want the inventory at our place not our supplier's place so we move the goods all the way from the you know supplier place to the our warehouse yeah so you spend say two thousand dollars to move the goods right okay which includes like customs insurance loading offloading etc now the total amount what you spend to become owner of this inventory is twelve thousand dollars ten thousand which you pay to the supplier and two thousand is the amount you paid to bring the material all the way from the supplier place to our warehouse sometimes you might uh, find some you know the goods which are defective broken expired not ordered by us so you may return certain goods to the supplier that 500 dollars worth of goods are not ordered by us so from 10000 we are going to reduce 500 10000 plus 2000 minus 500 because we purchased a good quantities at the time of payment the purchase the supplier is going to reduce say for example a discount or allowance of hundred dollars so the net cost of purchase of this inventory is ten thousand invoice price two thousand dollars freight in or carriage in watts minus the goods value of the goods return to the supplier 500 minus any discounts or allowances given by the supplier 10,000 plus 2,000, 12,000 minus 500 and 100 dollars, 11,400 is the net cost of purchases. This should be assigned to inventory value. Inventory value. Okay. So the cost of inventory is not 10,000. Cost of the inventory which you have in your warehouse is 11,400 dollars net cost of purchases inventory is important uh, and inventory control is also very important as you know that this is to be okay made available uh, to 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 meet our demand either in a retail industry or manufacturing industry so we need to have a proper control so to have this control companies use any of these two systems methods perpetual inventory system periodic inventory system perpetual inventory system maintains a complete history of the inventory like say for example on 1st of jan we purchased 1000 units at the rate of 10 dollars cost of the purchase is 10000 dollars on 5th of jan we sold 400 pieces okay so you reduce four thousand dollars so entire history is maintained like this so that you know what is the inventory value 
quantity as well as the value as on the closing date called perpetual inventory system. So including the, the details of purchases from whom we purchased, what customs we paid, what delivery charges we paid, what transportation charges we paid, what insurance we paid, entire information is available here on continuous basis called perpetual inventory system. So here we record the amounts into inventory, giving the details so that you have updated information in the system. Periodic inventory system is a system wherein you just maintain only ledger accounts, ledger accounts. Like, you know, you prepare only just purchases account, okay? You do not record the quantity, rate, etc. Purchase account are debited, supplier account is credited. And the rest of all accounts, you will have individual accounts like freight account, insurance account, customs account. So they have their respective accounts. Okay, so you have a purchases account, you have customs, you have transportation, you have insurance, etc. When you club all these related direct expenses account, you will get the inventory value. Then how do you know that closing stock to find out the, you know, the cost of goods sold? In a perpetual inventory system, you are entering entire amount into inventory and every purchase, every sale is updated immediately so that automatically cost of goods sold is calculated from the system itself. But in case of periodic inventory system, you have different accounts with different dollar amounts. So it is difficult to find out the cost of goods sold. You will have only cost of goods available for sale. That is the purchase price plus all the respective accounts. When you add all this, you will get cost of goods available for sale, but not cost of goods sold like in the case of perpetual inventory system. So what you need to do is you should know that what is the closing stock? What is the closing inventory? So when you, when you know that this, this is a closing inventory which is lying there and deduct from this total amounts to arrive at cost of goods sold. So your cost of goods sold depends upon the value of ending inventory which you found, right? So all the way you have to go and verify the physical inventory, take a record of it, find the dollar amount to uh, arrive at cost of goods sold. So under periodic inventory system, you need to find ending inventory to know the cost of goods sold, which is not encouraged so you see many industries, retail, manufacturing, etc. they like to have perpetual inventory system. And today's, the present ERP systems help us to maintain this perpetual method. And also we can see the live, you know, the inventory in the systems so that where a particular item is, on what is the quantity, when we bought it. So all this information is available in a perpetual inventory system. Now, Sometimes you have inventory in your warehouse, but you are not the legal owner of the business. Sometimes the inventory is still with the supplier or on the way transit, but you became owner already. You did not receive the physical delivery of the goods. So how do you account this? How do you account this? Whether you are the owner or the seller is the owner, okay? He sold the goods, but you haven't received the goods. Still, you are not the owner, though you bought them. Or you bought them, but they still the goods are in transit or still with the supplier, but you became owner. So the terms which you need to use here to make this inventory clear, whether you are the owner or the vendor is the owner on a particular date, especially when we have imports and exports when the goods are in transit. The terms which we use here are called in quote terms, international commercial terms, international commercial terms, which every 
trader, every importer, every exporter knows about it. It's a common understanding, mostly issued by the International Chamber of Commerce. Okay, in quote terms, international commercial terms. Say for example, FOP shipping point, if we use in the uh, documents that the price is FOB shipping point. It means that the moment suppliers, supplier hands over the inventory to the shipping company at his place, the goods are handed over here to the shipping company. Goods are handed over. Okay, the moment he gets the documents from the shipping company, he will just supply these documents to you, you become owner. You haven't received the goods, but you are still, you are still, you know, the owner of the goods. Why? Because the term what we use here, pre on board or freight on board, shipping point at supplier place. Okay, so you become owner. So from this place to this place onwards, you become owner and the risk is transferred to you. It is your responsibility to carry these goods all the way from the shipping point at supplier's place to your warehouse. As the ownership is already transferred, so it is your responsibility. When you use the term called FOB shipping point, Right. When we mention FOB destination, it means that all the way the customer is uh, supplier is agreeing to send the goods at your place destination. So the goods are handed over to you. That day you will become owner. So the risk is transferred to the supplier, seller, until the goods are handed over to you. You are a customer. You cannot book this inventory in your books until you physically receive these goods if you use a term called FOB destination. Okay. Seller owns the goods until buyer receives them. So like say for example, you bought these goods on November 25th. You receive these goods on January 10th. You will record this on January 10th as inventory. Okay. Whatever you paid that would be recorded as recorded as advance payment. Because goods are in transit and the terms are it will be destination at your point. Therefore, you won't become the owner. If something goes wrong, there is a risk during this transit the supplier will have to bear the risk because you haven't become owner of the goods we understand now in quote terms which will define the ownership of the goods goods on consignment means what a uh, uh, a principal sends some goods to his agent to be sold on commission basis okay and principal so, you know, sent say 50 units of inventory to be sold at the rate of say $1,000 each. Yeah. Though the position is with the agent, the agent is physically having this 50 pieces in his warehouse, still he is not the owner. The principal is the owner. Say for example, at the end of the year, agent sold 45 pieces and he's having five pieces in his stock. Okay, right. This five pieces should be shown as a closing stock in principal's books, but not agent's books. Though physically these five units are there with the agent. It is a consignment business. And goods sold on buyback agreements, certain agreements where you sign that we will buy it back 
Okay, so there also we take the owners.